at the end of my last trip after seven days up the west coast I put into Manganui. It was a relief to stop but the forecast was favorable tomorrow then easterly again for a week. I didn't want to wait here for a week so I decided to quickly repair the self-steering gear and do another overnight sail to the Bay of Islands. Rope and aluminium corners really don't go together. I must have had the lines crossed inside of the the tube, it was steering the wrong way, um, so the quickest way to fix it was to uncross them here, and it's working really well. Um, I just need a better mechanism for adjusting the tension of the lines because that's really that's critical for making this design work. Since I removed that troublesome solar arch, I've now discovered there's actually a really nice space at the back of the boat. A very nice beach seat. I think I'll anchor next to this red junk rig. I walked into town. Back in the early 19th century, this place was called the Hellhole of the Pacific. It was also briefly the capital of New Zealand. Now it has a bagel shop. I met a sailing inspiration, Annie Hill. I read her book, Voyaging on a Small Income, when I started sailing back in 2004, and it steered me away from desiring all the shiny, expensive stuff. She recently built this amazing boat, and you can see some great footage of it sailing on her channel. Here's another interesting local site, the Mr. Asia House. Mr. Asia was a notorious drug smuggling kingpin who had a brief reign in the late 70s before being murdered by an ambitious underling. They would smuggle drugs into New Zealand on yachts, drop sackloads off at his private wharf, and then go and check in at customs. But the crazy part is his batch is only a few hundred metres away from the customs dock and in line of sight. Anyway, you aren't allowed to arrive in the dark anymore. My eyes do not deceive me. I believe this is a hot tub boat. That round thing is clearly a hot tub with tubes going in and out of that um, burner thing um, and a tiller extension so that you can steer from inside the hot tub. Only problem with this is you're going to be listening to an outboard the whole time, which is going to make it a bit less relaxing steps up the front so you can when you so when you get too hot you just climb up there and then dive off. It's like what the hell is this? And then I realized it's a mast. It's moving masts. There were lots of interesting boats around. I'm not sure but I think this might be a Wailo too. I guess the decks have been rounded over to make the cabin both flush and a little bit higher. After a little online research I decided that this is definitely a Tiki 46 with some slight modifications. I anchored at the end of the navigable section of the river. After this is waterfalls. If you anchor your boat here, take care to avoid those rocks that come out of the water at low tide. I was anchored in front of New Zealand's oldest stone building. It is now a museum. Clark said that everything was assembled on the ground, and then numbered, and then disassembled, and then brought up on the roof. I'd say the beams are still original, but these pieces look much newer. Now that's a drill press. 
It's now 201 years old and the roof has been replaced two times. This is Cape Brett. It is named after an English admiral whose first name was Piercy. Captain Cook thought it would be funny and named the Pierced Island after him and then the Cape too. Normally English colonial place names are not very interesting, usually just about some important person they wanted to impress, but this one at least is a funny story as well. Having an electrical battery problem, I just woke up and real I realised my phone wasn't changing. I thought, oh, it's not plugged in properly. Then I realised, no, it doesn't charge it with power. Then, then nothing else had power. The other day, I was coming out of the Zurichur River and I was electric motoring for a long time on high power. And so I did it for like an hour and the battery still said it was like 93%. So I was like, oh, it's fine. And continued going. And then I had just gotten out and then the battery just cut. I woke up and it was like this. So there's some kind of power system. This is... This is saying the battery is full. The charge controller, which is meant to be able to automatically uh, detect if it's on a 12 volt or 24 volt system, had become confused and decided my 24 volt system was actually a 12 volt system. Disconnecting both the batteries and the solar panels reset it. I set up the panels and the batteries in parallel as a 12 volt system and that balanced the charge. After it seemed happy, I rewired back to 24 volts. I met up with a friend that I met via the Warren Facebook group. They have a Hanimoa 23 named Tuatara, which is a native New Zealand lizard. They have a smaller boat, but a much bigger electric outboard than me. It pushed the boat very well, but required a 48 volt system. I'm considering installing something like this in Yeslets, but it would require completely redoing the entire electrical solar battery system. Whereas the way I sail is mainly engineless, with just a little bit of the convenience of electric Oh yeah, it's a pretty tight fit. Yeah, it's pretty tight it goes. Yeah. Have you had that happen? They dropped me off in my kayak so that I could follow them in my own boat. Looks like there's been a mutiny. It was fascinating to see the differences in our approach to sailing. When you let the little boat choose the anchorage. <laughs> but here but um, I'm just going to park on the beach. I'm just going to ram the beach. It actually made me a little bit jealous of them having a smaller boat that could much more easily nose up to the beach and avoid a lot of the big boat hard work. The next day, continuing south with more light easterlies. Experimenting again with my tap hole and Genoa extension. I tried to get some nice footage of my wind vane system in action. I'm going to run this footage eight times faster so you can see how directionally stable it is. By no means perfectly straight, but considering it's made from just a few sticks and some plywood and bits of string and stuff like that, I think it's pretty good. Although I've never actually been sailing on someone's boat with a commercial wind vane, so I don't actually know what that would compare like. Rangitoto Island means we're nearly in Auckland. The weather was pretty much perfect and then we got hit by a rain squall. 
that passed, but then I was calmed. And then I drifted into the middle of the channel, and then a cruise ship came. Um, I had to frantically rewire the motor because I'd had battery problems. But there's 80% charge, so... Um, okay, there's the greens, the reds, so I think there's enough room for it to get past. Pretty, pretty close. Just get a feeling Tungaroa doesn't want me to go to Auckland. First squall, then becalmed, then nearly hit by a ship. That day I made it to Okahu Bay, and then the next day I sailed under the harbour bridge.